Okay, so we are going to start a new topic today, read Mullah codes. Oh, man. Okay. Read Mullah codes. Okay. So before we do that, I want to emphasize once again that what you've seen so far is uh, so, so at, at this point in the course. If somebody wants a P error correcting code, if so far, if somebody wants a P error correcting code with uh, block length n, okay, so I'm going to presume that you know how to come up with a code like this, come up with an efficiently implementable encoder, come up with the efficiently implementable decoder for that code. Okay, so what would be your choice? There are two possible choices. One is to have a. What are the two possible choices? You have a read Solomon code, or you could have a BCH code. Okay, so there are some advantages and disadvantages with either one. BCH code will have better performance for the same rate, etc., etc. But Read Solomon code has better lower implementation complexity in terms of field involved and all. Okay. So those are uh, that's that's the point where we are, and that's a good thing. So in a way, one ready-made solution we can always provide. Okay. So which is quite competent, it's not going to be very bad it's solution. Okay. So these read Miller codes are in a way codes that were uh, replaced by Read Solomon and BCS codes in a way. Okay. So read some read Miller codes are slightly older. So you might wonder why are we going to look at it. We won't look at it in great detail, but we'll see enough things there. Because the decoder for read Muller codes has some constructions which are very interesting. Okay, so it's not like a TRI correcting bounded distance decoder. It's a different kind of decoder. Like for instance, I've been mentioning how when you want to get to capacity and such things, like we'll see in the next course. If you take the course, you see that it's not important to just correct up to the error correcting capability. You should correct a large fraction of errors beyond that also. So read Muller codes have decoders which at least correct a non-zero fraction beyond their correcting capability. Okay. And that is a bit interesting. If for that purpose we will see it. It also has a lot of nice coding theory ideas and you will see the construction is very nice. Okay. So that is that's one thing uh, which is good about this. Okay. So those are the reasons why we are saying and talking about it. So when I talk about the decoder I think it will be you have to pay more attention. The way, way we derive the decoder and look at the properties will be very interesting. The read Muller codes. Okay, so let's begin with the RM code. So read Muller codes is a popular abbreviation of course is RM. Okay. So 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 read Muller codes have a block length which is 2 power m uh, m is uh, 1. So so when it's, it's it's very trivial to start with 0 and 1 and all that. Okay, so if the block length is, is 1 and 2 and 4 we can pretty much list out all possible codes, right, for blocking one. So usually people start with three, but I mean nothing stops you from defining them from zero, one, two. Okay, so usually m equal to three onwards is what is where it will become likely non-trivial. Otherwise, it will be just a real set of codes. Okay, and this is the block length, and uh, the construction. Okay, so so far for each element BCH code, are always motivated with the parity check matrix. Okay, so you will see for decoding read Muller codes, we will go to the parity check matrix. But before that, the construction is usually described in terms of the generator matrix. And this is an interesting construct where you can guarantee a minimum distance based on a generator matrix construction. Okay, so, so far, if you look at minimum distance property, the crucial property we used was the random one structure. And we said if you take so the, the matrix, will be in the, I mean, full rank, so we cannot have any independence. <laughs> what can I say? I have nothing. <laughs> they have a job to do and they have to do it. Okay. So, so that's what we've seen. Okay. So coming back, so this construction will be construction is using a generator matrix, and even through that, we'll be able to guarantee guarantee a, and we can guarantee a minimum distance. Okay. So I'm going to give you the parameters first, just to get just for you to get used to it, and then we'll see the actual construction. Okay. So the read Muller code has usually two parameters R and M. Okay, 
length will be 2 power m, m will go from 0, 1 to etc. And r will take any value from 0 to m. Okay. So, the Reed Miller code itself has two parameters small r and small m. m is some non negative integer 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. r is again an integer, but it takes values only from 0 to m. Okay. So, if m is 3, r can take values 0, 1, 2. Okay. So, for every r m k uh, uh, r and m you have dimension k of r m so this is the dimension k of r m is basically m choose 0 what is m choose 0 1 of course so if m choose 1 so on to m choose r ok so the block length is a power of 2, okay, 2 power 3, 2 power 4, etc. And the dimension is this binomial coefficients added up to R. Okay, so if you say R, so this such a code is called the R order Reed Muller code of length n equals 2 power m. Okay, so you say R is the order of the Reed Muller code. M is basically to stand for 2 power m. Okay, so you say the R order R m Reed Muller code, you can also say as the R order Reed Muller code of length 2 power m. Okay, so this is called the R order Reed Muller code. So that's the dimension. Okay. So it turns out minimum distance for this code is 2 power m minus r. Okay, so I think uh, I probably got caught in the let me just change this to 1 so that it becomes decent. Okay. So you can see that. So the minimum distance for the R power Reed Muller code is 2 power m minus r. Okay, so that's that's the powerful uh, nature of this result. So you have some good good properties uh, for this. Okay. All right. So that's the dimension. That's parameters. There's nothing in the parameter itself. You really need to know about the encoding and decoding and the construction etc. That's, that's what plays a crucial role. Okay. So the construction, like I said, is through the generator matrix. It also uses ideas of Boolean functions. Okay. So everybody here, I'm sure, have met Boolean functions at some point in their life. But you may not have thought of Boolean functions in this way. So we'll think of Boolean functions in a certain way. And uh, uh, so we'll, we'll worry about what, what are Boolean functions? What is a Boolean function? Okay. So Boolean function is some function which takes you from 0, 1. So specifically, we'll be interested in 0, 1, m to 0, 1. Okay. So if we have m variables, so we'll denote as v1, v2, vm. Okay, so this is a standard notation. Okay, so there are m variables. How many possible val values that these m variables can take? 2 power m. So you can make a truth table if you like for the Boolean function. So Boolean function, if I call it f, I can make a truth table which would list v1 through vm like this, and then it will have f of v1 through vm here. So I can put all possible two power m possibilities here. So you start with one, zero, one, go all the way to the uh, one fellow and write the value taken by the function here. So this will be like zero, one, whatever. Okay, right? So that, that's what you put. So this is uh, these are Boolean functions. I think you know quite a few properties of these Boolean functions. I'm going to use some of those properties in the in the construction. The first question I am going to ask you is, how many different Boolean functions are there in M variables? Two power two power m, is that right? Okay, so how many different Boolean functions are there in M variables? Two power two power m, how do you get to this, how do you get to that answer? Yeah, so do not think of it in terms of what a min term or max term form, you get totally confused. The best way to think about it is, here is a vector which represents the Boolean function, right? Every vector of length 2 power m can be a Boolean function. There is no, no problem with that. Okay, so you have a function of length 2 power m, uh, a vector, binary vector of length 2 power m, it can be a Boolean function. How do I make it a Boolean function? You put the vector vertically in this way and then write all possible v1 through vm 
in this order from top to bottom. You change this vector, the function changes. Right? So every vector of length 2 power m, binary vector, is a Boolean function. So how many different vectors, binary vectors do I have of length 2 power m? 2 power, 2 power m possibility. Okay. <coughs> so what we'll do is we'll think of the set of all Boolean functions as a 2 power m dimensional vector space. Okay. All right. So every single vector is a Boolean function. So think of the, every single vector is a Boolean. Okay. So it's just uh, so. So if you think about it, then when we do a n k code, we are dealing with n bit vectors. Okay. Vectors of length n. Here in read mode codes, I want n equals 2 power m. Okay. So 2 power m nicely fits into this Boolean function framework. If I don't have 2 power m, then I can't quite think of it as a Boolean function. Right? Because only when I have power of 2, it becomes a proper Boolean function of m variable, some variable. Otherwise, it just doesn't have the rich theory. Okay? So that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll, we'll take these Boolean functions in m variables. Variables and think of them as 0, 1, 2 power, okay, instead of all vectors in 2 power m dimensional binary space. Okay, that's the first thing. The next thing <coughs> that I will invoke is from your knowledge of uh, Boolean functions, you might know this. Okay, so if I write down a table like this, this gives me a certain form for the f. Okay, so I can go through and see every single place where f is 1 and then look up the v1 through vn that gives me that okay whenever a vi is 0 i would put a vi bar whenever a vi is 1 i would simply retain vi okay so i can write f of v1 v2 vm in this form right i can write f of v1 v2 vm as some summation okay where well, each term will be what? Some V1. So, 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 it should also be careful here. Yeah? VL1, VL2, VL. Right? And it may also be a bar. Okay? Is that correct? I can also say, put some bar there. But what do I know about V bar? V bar is what? 1 plus V. Am I right? Okay, in binary, V bar is the same as 1 plus V. Okay? Remember, plus is what? Modular to addition, okay, so XR. Okay. Am I right? Is that correct? Am I okay? Is that okay here? People okay? No? Maybe yes. Okay. So 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 I can do that here. So what do I have in what is this plus now? What is this summation? It's R, right? So I have to think of R here. So what happens when I do R? Okay. So remember, this plus cannot be. Uh, it's not the same as modulo two addition, right? So it's something else. So what is this? This is some R. But what what do I do in the R? R is what? Can I write R in terms of XR? Maybe not. Maybe not possible. Doesn't work. Okay. So let's 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 see a simple example, and then we'll go to. Okay. So I think if I write in general terms, it's very confusing. So let me take a simple example. Let me put m equals c and I'll appeal to this example and show you a general form for the Boolean function, okay, which is always possible. Okay, so let's just do example wise. So let's say m equals 3, I have 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, V3 on the left side, that's a, it's a convention for read Muller codes. Okay, so here I wrote it differently. Okay. Usually people write it in reverse. Okay, so you start with Vm on the left post side. Okay. And let's say a function that I want of V1, V2, V3 is basically uh, let's say I'll put 0 plus, 0 plus, 0 plus, 1 plus, 0 plus, 0 plus, 0 plus, 0 plus. Okay, suppose I do this. Okay, can I do that? That fine. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. All right. 
so 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 how can I write this function now? Okay, so I can write this function in what form? Yeah, v three part v two v one plus v three v two v one bar. Is it correct? Okay, so here this plus would be or right? So let me replace with or. I think it's not a it's not a very good thing to say. Anything else there? So let's say or. Is it okay? People are okay. Sorry, is this correct or is this wrong? Did I make a mistake here? It's fine, right? Okay. So okay. So. So each term here, what is each term here? So think of each term here. It will have a weight of. So 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 okay. So let me come back. So what is each term here? This is also a function, right? This is also a Boolean function. Am I right? Is that okay? Is that fine. This is also a Boolean function. In terms of a vector. What will be the weight of that vector? If I think of this Boolean function, see this overall Boolean function had a weight of two. Okay. Now, if I take this Boolean function alone, what will be the weight of that Boolean function? One. What about this Boolean function alone? It's also weight one. So when I have two weight one vectors which are not the same, or becomes the same as XOR. That's fine. Okay, so 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 keep this duality in mind. Okay, so you are always used to thinking of min terms as not vectors. Right? So you think of it as just uh, the expression v three bar v two v one. Okay, so you don't think of it as a vector. Okay, so I want you to think of every single term in this in this or sum also as a vector. Okay, so that becomes a vector. Right? You put all possible values of v one, v two, v three, but it will have only a single one. So okay. Is that clear? You will be happy or not? No. You are okay? Yes. No. Maybe. Okay. What is the vector corresponding to v3 bar v2 v1? Zero 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 one zero 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 zero. Is it okay? Right. But what is the vector? Zero 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 one zero 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 zero. Is it okay? Right? Okay. You tell me. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Okay. So you are all very happy with the correlation between vectors and Boolean functions. You tell me the vector corresponding to v3 bar v2. What I wrote here, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. You have to write the truth table for v3 bar v2 v1. You will get a long vector, two par m length vector. That is the vector corresponding to that. Okay. So what is the truth table corresponding to v3, v2, v1 bar? Yeah, it is 0000010. Now, in terms of these vectors, it doesn't matter whether I am oring or xoring. Why is that? Well, you know, if this is one, that cannot be one, right? Is it okay? Seems okay. Okay. So, so what can we do next? I mean, I don't quite like this form. I, I, I want to replace this or with xor. Okay, so I can do this here for in this form. Okay, so I can take any function f of v1, v2, v3. I can write it as wherever it is one. I put the min term corresponding to that, and then instead of or, I can replace it with xor. That is fine. So it can be replaced by xor. So okay. Okay, so so let's let's look at let's say v3 bar v2 v1. Okay, and suppose I want to write v3 bar as one plus v3. Okay, so what happens when I write one plus v3 there? Okay, so let's just look at that equation. What is v3 bar? When I write one plus v3, this plus is xor. So remember, this is xor. It's not r. Okay. So I can take this equation here and replace v3 by v3 bar by 1 plus v3. 
and then do multiplication. Multiplication is perfectly fine. Okay, so it is here v1 bar I can replace by 1 plus v1 and the plus would still be xr and I have an xr only in the middle. Okay, so when I write f in terms of this min term, exp min term expressions, the r that you are used to can be replaced with xr because I am interpreting these functions as vectors. Okay, be very careful, I mean <laughs> don't do this in the binary world that you are used to. You can't replace the r with xr, you will get a completely different uh, value. Okay, in the vector sense I can do that, it is okay. Right? Because I am thinking in terms of the vectors that are xr in here. But okay, when I write a function f of v1, v2, v3, I am thinking of the entire vector, not uh, something else. Is that okay? Or cannot be replaced with xr in general. But when I have such a situation, special situation, I can do it. Okay? So, every bar can now be replaced with 1 plus without the bar. And then I can now multiply it out. So, my finally, a claim I can make is any function so, so you proceed and proceed like this and you will see that the function the f of v1 v2 v3 that I had there becomes becomes where if I put 1 plus v3 here I will get v1 v2 plus v1 v2 v3 remember what is this plus plus again an xr ok sorry Again in XR, I would get V3, V2, V1 plus V3, V2. Okay. So, once again, V1, V2, V3 plus V3, V2. Is that the same? So, this would cancel V1, V2 plus V2, V3. Remember, this plus is not XR. Okay? Vector XR. Can we check this? V1, V2 plus V2, V3. Is that the same as the function I had? can go back and check that. Okay. So, if I do V1, V2, what will I get? What is V1, V2? 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Am I right? Okay. What is V3, V2? 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 1. Is that okay? So, if I do, do the XR there, I get back to the same. Okay. So, this is another expression of the same uh, function except that in terms of instead of R, I have XR now. Is it okay? So, be a little bit careful about what I mean by this, but it is a valid uh, statement. It is not a wrong statement to make. Is it okay? There are various other ways of proving it. It is not very hard. You can replace R with XR, but you have to do the corresponding changes there. And you can get to this formula. It's not even in the binary well. This is true. Okay, maybe this will go. I mean, you may not have thought about it, but so it's very important. Here. Okay. So now I can do this to every single function. Any function I come up with in m variables, I can write a truth table. I can write the min term form with or, since each min term does not have any problem with each other. So you just only write one. I can replace it with xor. And then go into each min term wherever I have a bar. Put one plus. Remember when I say one, what is this one? I'll, I'll think of this one as the all ones vector, right? Okay, I think of this one as the all ones vector. V3 is wherever V3 is one, it will be one. Okay, so you can go back and look here. V3 will be this vector. V2 will be this vector. V1 will be this vector. Right? So those are just real by themselves. They'll occur. Okay. So so when I do that, I get rid of all the odds. They all become xors. I get rid of all the bars. They just become product except that in some cases I might have the, the degree, the number of terms might have gone down by 1. So, I had V3 bar, V2, V1, I, I might have gone to V1, V2. Okay? A lot of cancellation might occur etc. I will do all that. But finally, I will be left with a form where each term is a product of some subset of the V1 through Vm and then I have XR. Okay? So, that is the result I want to make. I don't want to make a proof out of it, but it is quite clear how to do it. Okay? So, finally, I want to claim that any function v1 through vm can be written as, this is true for in general for binary case, can be written as some a0 times 1, okay, so I put a big 1 and put a bar there to denote that it is actually the all ones vector, I can also think of the rest one, plus a1 times v1, okay, remember the v1 I am thinking of it as a vector now, okay, so if you want, see all these things, this function is now a vector, 1 is a vector, v1 is a vector, etc. a2 v2, plus 1 and 2, some, uh, I don't know, I mean it is a bit painful to count this, so I will say uh, 
some a question mark. I'll put a question mark here. Just to, we'll come back to the count later. It's not very difficult to count it. Plus, and what models can I have? All possible products of two at a time, right? So I could have that. Okay, so some a question mark b one b two all the way to a question mark b m minus one v m. And then what can I have? All possible three at a time. All the way up to the last one will be a question mark b one b two. Yeah. Is that okay? Right? And the plus is an XOR. I can write any Boolean function in this form. Is that okay? So you can also think of it as a Boolean identity. This is a, it's very much a Boolean identity. In, in all the pluses are XORs. Don't think of it as a vector. Just put one there, V1, V2. We substitute the values here, take the XOR, you will get the function. Okay? So it's kind of an identity. You can think of it in that form. You can use some other Boolean identities if you want and show this. It's not very hard. Okay? So we will we will think of it as a vector. I mean, so the vector is useful because the vector is my, it will go back in a code word eventually. Okay, so that's what's important. Okay. So any Boolean function, remember Boolean functions. I'm thinking of it as belonging to zero one to power m, right? So that's the vector. It's a vector. Extra, extra. Is that okay? So each of these guys is a vector. One is a vector. V one is a vector. V two is a vector. V n is a vector, etc. So if I have to select this question mark, I can go through what will be the last question mark that's of interest to me. Two power m minus one, right? I'm starting at zero. Okay. Is it okay? Why will it have to be two power m? So it's a set of all subsets of V one through V n, right? So you can have one at a time. Uh, zero, nothing, the null set, and then one at a time, two at a time. It will be one plus and choose one plus and choose two plus and choose three all the way to and choose m, and that will be two par. Okay, we know this. So you have two par m terms in this. And what about each of these vectors? One, v one, v two, v m, and all that. What about each of these vectors? Okay, can I make some statement about linear independence here? Can they be linearly dependent? And any two vectors in this XOR to give you zero? It's not possible, right? Well, see, the, you will never get a Boolean identity like that. Okay. Two of them, see, any two terms here have a different form, different set of subsets of V1. For instance, it will be V1, V2. Another will be V3, V4. Why will V1, V2 ever be equal to V3, V4? So that, that will never happen, right? So there can be no identity, linear relation involving any of these things. Because they are all independent variables, they are all linearly independent. You okay, think about it for a while, there are various ways of convincing yourself that they have to be linearly independent, but it is easy to think of it as Boolean functions. If it is not linearly independent, there should be an identity linking all of them, and how can that happen? Right? The only that is for all possible u1, v2, v3, you will never get an equation being equal to c. Okay? So each of these guys is linearly independent, and any function can be written as a linear combination of those things. Okay? So what does it mean? So this is a basis. Okay, so this from one v1 v2 vn v1 v2 vn minus one. All these guys, these two par m vectors, form a basis for the space of Boolean functions. When you view it as a vector space of two par m dimension, is it okay? So this guy has a basis, which is one v1 v2 vn, then v1 v2, so on till vn minus one. Vm all the way down to the last curve will be v1 v2 Vm. Is it okay? Okay, so these are all relatively simple statements about Boolean functions, but you may not have thought of Boolean functions this way. So first time you see it, it will be a little bit surprising. Okay, so it's not very hard, but a bit confusing. Okay, all right. So remember each of these basis vectors. Are length two par m vectors, okay? Right? Remember that. So I'm going to ask you more difficult questions. If you think you understand it, there will be more difficult questions coming. Is it, does it seem clear? If you have any question, you can ask us. What is the question? Now I consider v1 plus v2 plus v1 v2. Hmm. Oh, what that what is it? Why will that be zero? See, it's XOR. No, v1 is XOR. V1 plus V2 plus V1 V2 cannot be zero. No, it's bar. No, there is a bar. V1 plus V2 plus V1 V2 cannot be zero. Why? Because V1 plus V2 plus V1 V2 cannot be zero. Why? Because V1 plus V2 plus V1 V2 cannot be zero. Why? Because V1 plus V2 plus
be careful be careful don't use a boolean boolean entities xor is different what is axr a bar a or a bar is one always what is axr a bar a okay, so it's not true so be careful with xor okay so your boolean entities usually are with or Yes. Be a little bit careful. A plus A bar is one, as you say, but that's or is or is the linking factor, right? Okay. All right. So maybe that's that's what I wanted to say. But why are you saying? Okay. So you're saying what? V one plus V two. Why will this be zero? V one has a one in the first position. Mm. V2 has a 1 in the second position, and V2 is 0. No, not everything else is 0. Okay, sorry, I think that's where the confusion comes. Okay, so V1 is this guy, man. V1 is this guy. V2 is this guy. Okay, okay, so I take that back. So A X R A bar is 1, right? A R A bar is also 1. Okay, so I got, I got confused by that. I'm sorry about that. So let's just come back to this. So when I say V1, so, so be careful here. So, v1 is a Boolean function, which is one every time v1 is one. Okay, so it is actually if you write it in this uh, in this min term form, it is a very complicated expression. There will be like four terms: it will be v3 bar, v2 bar, v1 plus v3 v3 bar, v2 v1 plus several terms. Yeah, so everything else will cancel and you get v1 alone. Okay, so v1 is basically this guy. Okay, so this linear independence is maybe it's not very trivial to see, but you cannot have any identities involving these things. Okay, that's something that cannot happen. So uh, basically, you think about it as well. I'll tell you a very simple way to think about it. Think of f of v1 to vm as polynomials. Okay, polynomial is the best way to think about it. Okay, so think of these guys as polynomials. Okay. And the way, the way they take only binary values, but they are polynomials. Okay, so when you want identities, you have to look for polynomial kind of identities. Okay, there is no way v1 plus v2 plus v1 v2 will be equal to zero for all. Of you. So that such things won't happen. So don't think of it as a Boolean function with R and XR and all that. It's a bit confusing if you do that. Okay, even I got confused. <laughs> but anybody can get confused by these things. Okay, so it's, it's totally different way of thinking about it. The best way to think of these things are polynomials. Okay, they take binary values, the polynomials in binary variables. Okay, that's the best way to think about it. So, if you want an identity, you will have to have a polynomial identity. The only thing you can have is like a plus b square e plus a square plus b square. Something like that you can have. That's okay. But such things won't happen here. If you have this distinct monomial terms, there is no way they are going to give you any. Is that okay? But also other ways of arguing the linear independence. But I'll just leave it at that. So, the linearly independent, they form a basis for uh, Boolean functions. Is it okay? Any other question? Okay. The next question I'm going to ask is, what is the weight of every single vector in this basis? Okay. What can you say about the weight? Be, be a little bit careful. Though. Okay. What is the weight of one? Two power m. Okay. What is the weight of these guys? Two power m minus one. What about the weight of these guys? Two power m minus two. Is that okay? Did you get that? Okay, how do I, I conclude that the weight of V1 is 2 power m minus 1? Okay, so it has only V1, right? V2 through Vm are bone curves. Okay, as long as Vm, V1 is 1, I can have 2 power m minus 1 possible values assigned to V2 through Vm. For all of that, it will still have a value 1. So the number of places where it will be 1 is 2 power m minus 1. So what do you think of V1, V2? For V1, V2 to be 1, V1 should be equal to 1 and V2 should be equal to 1. What about V3 to Vm? You can take arbitrary value. So you have 2 power m minus 2. Okay. What will be the weight of this guy? Okay, weight is 1. Is that okay? Is it okay? Alright. So one statement that I can make very easily is out of these 2 power m vectors, only a single vector has odd weight. That is weight equal to 1. Everything else has even weight. Okay, I want you to remember that. 
that is quite important. Everything else has even weight and they are linearly independent. Okay. But there is one guy which has odd weight. So together they can make a basis, it makes sense. Okay, if all of them are even, then it cannot be a basis. Right? Something is wrong. Right? So, so all of them, there's one guy which is odd, it may, can make a basis. Is it okay? So another way to think about it is, if you forget about Boolean polynomials, all this nonsense, for 0, 1, 2, par m, there are many different bases. This is just one interesting basis, which has an association with the Boolean variables. Okay? So you can have the the canonical basis if you like, it is not very exciting. This basis is a little bit more exciting, I will show you one. Is it okay? Different basis for 0, 1, 2 par m, but it also has a relationship with the binary polynomial terms. Alright? So, if you want, let us look at one more example. So, maybe we will look at the example m equals 3 in slightly more detail. Okay? So, I had, I have 1, I have b1, I have b2, I have b3. Okay, so let me write it down. Okay, so it's very common, like I said, to write v3, v2, v1. So let me do that. So it's going to be what there? 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, so, so in many books you will find people write it row wise, but I have seen I think people are not very comfortable with truth table written row wise, because okay, so everybody likes column wise, so that is why it is okay. okay. So, you have v1, v2, v2, v3, v1, v3, and then you have what? v1, v2, v3. Okay. So, what is v1, v2? You can write it down, it is not very hard. So, you see it is got by 2. Okay. What is v2, v3? Okay, did I make a mistake here? It should be a 1 here, no? Okay, V2, V3 is what I wrote before, right? 0, 0, 0, 0. I'm sorry? Yeah, yeah, I'll do that, I'll do that. This should be 0, right? Is that okay? What is V1, V3? Zero 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 one zero one. Okay, and what is V one V two V three? All zeros last two alone will be one. Okay, so no, it's probably not the best presentation possible, but you can see that there are how many vectors here? Eight vectors. Okay, eight functions, and they are linearly independent. You can check that they are linearly independent if you like, or you can believe what I said. They are linearly independent, and they form a basis for the eight dimensional binary vector space. Okay, so, it is just a different basis, think about it. Okay, it is a different basis and I have a, some peculiar way of indexing each element of the basis. Okay, instead of saying E1, E2 to all the way to E8, I am calling that as 1, V3, V2, V1, V1, V2, V2. So, it is just, that is one way of thinking about it. Another way of thinking about it is, it is a polynomial in three variables with binary values. So, the only possible monomial terms are v1, v2, v3, the constant term v1, v2, v2, v3, v1, v3, v1, v2, v3. There cannot be any other term. For instance, you cannot have v1 square v2 bar 4. Why can't you have that? v1 square is equal to v1. In binary world, that is true. So, v2 bar 4 is also the same as v2. So, it will come back to v1, v2. It will not give you any new vector. Okay? So, if you think of binary value polynomials, these are all the terms that you can have. Okay? So, that is how it works. I do not even have to appeal to Boolean functions, I can just say binary polynomials. Okay, so given binary polynomials, now we are ready to see the definition of Reed Miller codes. Okay, so the Reed Miller code Rm R comma M is generated by okay, so you can guess it's not very hard, it's generated by one. V1, V2, Vm, V1, V2, go on till Vm minus 1, Vm, ok, so I think I got that wrong, just do that, ok, all the way up to V1, V2, Vr, ok, so let me do that all the way up to on this side, the last case will be 
will be taken r at a time. Okay, so it will be m minus r plus one. Is that okay? So this is just one term. This is another term. These are all terms. Okay. So remember, if I have n variables, this basis, right, will start at 1, it will have vm, vm minus 1 all the way to v1, then it will have v1, v2, v2, v3, all those things, and it will have 3 at a time, then it will have 4 at a time, so on till r at a time, right, I will stop there. I go all the way from 1 to products of v1 through vm, take an r at a time and stop there, okay. So, I take only those vectors and make that the basis of my code. Okay, what do you mean the basis of my code? They are the rows of my generator matrix. Okay, so they are the basis. Okay, they are all linearly independent. So clearly, dimension will be equal to the formula I gave you. Okay, one plus m choose one plus m choose two, so on till m choose. Okay, so this is one way of defining Reed Muller codes. There are so many other ways. I'll give you one more way soon enough. Okay, so is this clear? Okay, right. So I'm going to take the basis vectors corresponding to monomial terms having product of up to r v i. Okay, so v1, v2, v r can be anything. Okay, very equivalent definition is the following. Rn of r comma m equals f of set of all Boolean functions, Boolean polynomials such that degree is less than or equal to r. Okay, so pre previously I gave you the basis and I said you combine the basis in any which way you want. When you combine them in arbitrary ways, what will you end up getting? You will get all possible Boolean polynomials of degree less than or equal to R. What do you mean by degree now? Okay. So degree of Vi1, Vi2 Vil will be basically L. Okay. And what is the degree of the of the function itself? What is degree here? So, yeah, maximum degree. Maximum degree. So, over all terms. Okay. So, for each term, I can define a degree, which is basically the number of variables occurring in the term. And for any Boolean polynomial, I can have a maximum degree. In fact, there can be multiple terms which have a maximum degree. That's okay. I have no problems with that, but the maximum degree itself will be unique. Okay, we'll have just one value, which is okay. So why are why is this definition equivalent to that definition? Yeah, both of them are the same, right? So if you have degree less than or equal to r, each term has an at most r terms. So clearly it can be written as a linear combination of the vectors I gave you. If I take linear combination of arbitrary vectors there, it will definitely give me only a Boolean polynomial of degree less than equal to r. So both of these are the same. Okay. So it's very convenient to think of an arbitrary Reed Muller code word. Okay. So a code word of R of R comma M, it's very conveniently part of as a, a function like this, degree less than or equal to r, which is what I wrote down there, but that's how we think of a code word of a Reed Muller code. Okay. So if you think of code words of cyclic codes, we found it very convenient to think of it as a polynomial, right? C of x. It has some roots, that's what controls it. Here, for root Miller codes, it's very convenient to think of them as polynomials with binary variables and the degree is restricted, degree is less than the Okay. So everything adds up in this nice little bit. Okay. So let's see uh, examples for m equals 3. Okay, so let me take this guy here. Okay. So what happens when r is equal to, so, so let me just uh, copy this guy and then take it to some other page and then we will see this one here. Okay. So this is what we had for uh, m equal to 3. So if I have r equals 0. Okay, what are the dimensions? 
So R equals 0 has n equals 8 of course. K will be what? 1, right? And what will be the code? Yeah, so it will be the 8 comma 1 repetition code. Do you see that? Right? The basis is only this guy, first guy alone, and that is just a repetition code. So clearly the minimum distance is also 8 and it agrees with our formula. Right? So 2 power m minus r it agrees with the formula. So what happens when r equals 1? It will be an 8 comma 4 code. Okay. So it's a more complicated code. I don't know how to how to describe it. So in fact you can describe it in a nice way. So if you think of this, think of these guys, okay, they, I mean there are various ways of thinking about it, so let's forget it. So 8 comma 4, okay, so you can show the minimum distance will be 4. That's okay. So what happens when R is equal to 2? I'm sorry? 8 comma 7, but what code is that? Can you identify the code? It is the even weight code. How do I conclude that this has to be the even weight code? Yeah, so first of all, these seven guys are linearly independent and each of them has even weight. Do you agree? Each of them has even weight. So any, any combination you make will still have even weight. Okay, so that will be all the even weight vectors of length 8. Okay? But 8 comma 4, I do not quite know what it is. Right? So let me just leave it as a question mark. It is the first order read Miller code of length 8. Okay, it is a very nice code, it has some good structure, we will see it later on. But one thing we know is d is equal to 1, 4. Okay, so here d is 2, we know that. What happens if I put r equals 3? I get the entire 8, 8 identity code and d will be 1. Okay, that is also Okay. We can take code word. Yeah. It is also a code word, yes. It's got eight. Only this guy is weight one. Everything else is even weight. This is eight weight eight, no? You have eight possibilities. No, no, no. This guy is all weight. V one, V two, V three is all weight. Or all is odd weight. All one is I mean I'm looking at two par n, right? So it's always even. No problem. Okay? They're all right. So some of these statements are in general true. Okay, so r equal to three is the eight comma eight identity code. Okay. So you'll notice once again the codes are occurring as dual paths. So r equal to zero and r equal to three are actually duals. R equal to one, I don't. No, no, no. R equal to. Did I get that right? I'm sorry. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. R equal to zero and r equal to two are duals. Okay, r equal to one will turn out to be a self dual code. Okay, so you will see later on that it is a self dual code. Okay. R equal to 3 is a weird code, but anyway, it is it's, it's 8, comma 0. If, if you think of a not including anything, okay, it is like the null code or something. Okay. So you can think of it also as a pair if you like. But R equal to 0 and R equal to 2 are duals, and like I said, R equal to 1 will be a self dual code. Okay. So we will see that later on. Okay. So these statements are in general true, and we will try to prove that. But one more thing is this property of minimum distance d equals 2 power m minus r. Okay. So, so I will urge you to look at the example of m equal to 4, it is not very hard, try to look it up, write down all the basis vectors, see what it looks like, it's again you will see some interesting observations, okay. So only one observation which I will make, which I will uh, write down right now, Rm of 1 comma m is the repetition code, I'm sorry, 0 comma m, sorry, the repetition code, okay. The other observation I want to make is Rm of m minus 1 comma m is the even weight. Okay, repetition code 2 power m comma 1, even weight code 2 power m comma 2 power m minus 1. Is it okay? These two statements are in general true for any m. How do I prove this? It is again the same proof, only the last way is odd weight, everything else is even weight, it is linearly independent, so it has to span all the even weight values. Okay? So these two statements uh, we will keep. What I will show in the next class is the minimum distance property. The fact that minimum distance is 2 power m minus r. That is what makes it interesting, right? So, guarantees a minimum distance. And the next thing we will show is the dual property also. Okay? So, after that we will try to go towards the deeper. Okay? So, we will stop here for now.